Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for, for being here to listen and thank you for the organization of this session. Um, what I'm going to, I, I'm going, first, I'm going to take you a little bit south that we, we were discussing here. So I'm going to take you to Southern Europe, to the Iberian Peninsula <coughs> in the Middle Ages. We also are going to move a little bit from the chronology we were speaking. So please, the prehistorians and protostorians from this room, please take a, 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 a little attention to me, please. Um, what I'm going to say is, well, I do speak a little bit too fast. Duncan is smiling at me because he knows that. So if I, if you don't understand what I'm saying for some reason, please just ask me to speak slower and I will. <laughs> That's a thing when I get a little bit nervous, I just start, start to blah, blah, blah. So sorry about that. So first thing, and I'm going to increase your curiosity about what I'm talking about because I'm going to tell you first, where was it found? Of course, you've seen by the title that we are speaking about the devil which is something that people ask me, how do you put the devil in the Middle Ages? Well, sometimes we get lucky enough to find material evidence of this superstitions and belief in beliefs that actually people had in the Middle Ages. Um, it was found in Lisbon in an area, uh, in, a, in a historical area that we call uh, the Moradia, which was the fact, which was when in um, 1147, when the city was reconquered or conquered to the Muslims, the Muslims were not expelled. They were simply put in a, a neighborhood, an enclosed one with walls, and they developed their life in there. What happened is, although what we usually think is they were enclosed there, this is not true. The, the, it, there, was, there weren't any physical walls or physical gates. So people were just interacting. And we know now that a lot of Christians live there, a lot of Jews live there, and a lot of this is all before 1497 when uh, Dom Manuel passes a law that everyone has to be expelled, which they actually aren't because they continue until the 17th century. But okay, so you get an idea of this. What I want to say is you get an idea of this multicultural uh, group of people that actually live there. So, and how was it found? The Maria Svera was a, a very uh, important character in 19th century Lisbon history. She was a fado singer. I know. I don't know if you all know what the, the, our typical uh, music singing. She was a fado singer. She was a very famous prostitute. She died at 26 with the consumption, but she remained like this special character in the, ide in the ideas of Lisbon and the, the storytelling of Lisbon. So a few years ago, in 2010, the city hall decided to uh, uh, restore the house to excavations and create like a, a, a memory house of Maria Svera. During those excavations, of course, we. Uh, <clears throat> We went down, we, we started excavating, and we found, and uh, right below the ground, we had 15, 15 14, uh, 13th century uh, layers that actually told us or actually gave us some hints of how people did live in this, in this time, of, uh, in, this, in this historical period in the city. This is a, quite an interesting place because, contrary to what we discover in medieval houses in Lisbon, the material culture was quite weird. We don't know what happened in here, but it was a mixture of Muslim and uh, Christian things already. So we did the, the, the article zoology, zoology analysis as well, and it was completely different from the things that we are usually used to see in either Christian or I. So something of an intense multicultural thing happened here, happened there. The most weird thing was those spots. The house was really, we believe it was abandoned during an earthquake, so it was almost all there. The curious thing is, there were a lot of pots turned upside down. We have no idea what that happened in the Middle Ages. We know it, it happened somewhere. It happened sometimes in Roman periods. It happened sometimes in prehistorical periods. But this was the first time we found it in uh, a medieval place. We don't know. There were about 20 pots turned upside down. Nothing was there. Nothing was inside. So they were just upside down. Is this some kind of ritual? We don't know. OK. So continuing in, <clears throat> in one of the, we, we continue excavating. And there was a hole in the ground. So what the hell? We, first we thought it would be a storage pit, but it wasn't. It was something that a hole that was excavated there. Nothing was found inside except this little guy. <laughs> so this is my Lisbon devil. <laughs> <laughs> what you are seeing is not the devil itself. It's the mold. So what was happening there? So we did all the proper chemical analysis. So this was made in Lisbon clay. So it was really made in Lisbon. It's high fired. So someone paid really well to someone to uh, fire it in a kiln, in the local kiln. But Moradia was a place where kilns were located in the Middle Ages. So it, it wasn't far from the place where it was, the, it wasn't produced far from the place where we, it was found. Uh, and we did the chemical analysis inside. And in fact, the little, the, the little devils that was made were made of lead. 
So <laughs> this was kind of a thing, and lead has a very low fusion mel melting point, so it would be quite easy to do it in a regular, everyday uh, house. So, of course, we are all very excited when we find something like this, but what does it mean? That's, my, that's the most important thing is, how do we think that people... We know, and okay, when we find something like this, we strive to, we just go through all the possible documents to see what the hell does this mean? Why do, do this, was this a recurrent thing? Was this an isolated case? What does it happen? More importantly, why was it found in the Moorish neighborhood? So, and of course, this may, makes no sense for us because we always seem like the devil to be a Christian thing. And Christians are always balancing the good and evil between things. and. Were they possible to have the devil? So we started to look around and started to go through documents. And it seems like uh, that uh, superstitious, superstitious syncretisms are more common in Lisbon than people would think so. Uh, first, it is a very complicated time in Portugal history. This is probably late, the context is late 14th century. 14th century. So this is a time of war with Spain. Uh, this is a time of starvation, this is a time of plague, this is a time of sieges, this is a time of very uh, of huge doubts towards the future. So, this seems to be the proper political and cultural time to the development of superstitious, uh, superstitions, uh, superstitious beliefs. So, we went through the documents and what we found. A royal letter from 3rd November uh, 1385 just a few weeks before the, the Algeborocha battle, which was a battle that, uh, a decisive battle between the relationship between Portugal and Spain, and passing and confirming the laws, making the city's chamber with the presence of judges and prosecutors of the craftsmen, everyone was there, uh, with the intention to clean the city from idolatry mistakes and other Gentile practices and barbaric ways of people. So we started to look up in several uh, documents and letters that actually the, 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 what they call the Gentile practices or the practices that are not usually done according to Christian ways are frequently uh, mentioning the documents. So we continue and a, a few years later uh, in King Alfonso's laws, which this is what we have, but it was based on previous laws. So uh, a, a king when uh, established a new book of laws, it is always uh, establishing the previous books of all the previous kings and said, no one will dare to do divinatory arts, like sticks to find treasures, Look at water, crystal, mirror, sword, or any other shiny thing, or a lamb's back. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> or to metal, or to do metal figures or images. So that that was it. So we know that is a common practice to do metal images of what we don't know, but re related to something that was not permitted. So we we are trying to see or any other thing, including do, do, do divinatory readings in a dead man's head. So when we found a skull somewhere that we have no idea where the body is, probably we now have the, 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 the evidence of what was happening. And we continue. And so what is the people's relations with the devil? Okay, we know the law was forbidding them. But what, how do the people relate to the devil in the Middle Ages or early modern ages in Portugal? Uh, and the Inquisition is fa fabulous and fantastic when it comes to the say. I'm just bringing you a simple case but we have hundreds of them where women relate to the devil. So in this case, Barbara Dias, a lady who lived in Teixeira, this is a, uh, somewhere around Lisbon, uh, an unmarried woman who was arrested in the local jail because she had been denounced as a witch and sorceress. She had 30 years old and two or three years ago, the devil had deceived her and she had engaged in sexual intercourse every night since then. And he put his manly nature into her to her rejoice Although his manly nature wasn't naturally cold. So the devil burns in hell, but for some reason he has a very cold penis. <laughs> so, this is a recurrent definition of the devil in Portugal. So I don't know why this happened, sorry. But this is a, a frequent de 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 designation. Uh, another, uh, another girl that I didn't bring, but another girl told me that, you know the devil, the devil enters to your bodily parts. So this is how we, we, we decided, that, that this is how we probably believe that this, this is a representation of the devil and not, for instance, a rena Renaissance god or something that sometimes are uh, also phallic. Um, devil representations are very, 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 when I say very, very scarce in Portugal, actually we only have one, dated from 1531. This is the only representation of the devil we have. Uh, this is Alta Barco de Inferno, it's a play from Gil Vicente. Gil Vicente would be our Portuguese Shakespeare. Uh, a little bit earlier, but he doesn't write love plays, he only writes satirical ones. So it's quite interesting because in this thing, the, the Alto da Barca do Inferno, he puts the devil on a, a boat, an angel in the other boat, 
and they are going to cross the river either to, to hell or either to heaven. Let us say that he has 13 characters in this and only one goes to heaven. So as you can imagine, a lot of people go to hell. So this is an um, a image. It, in, if we look at carefully, I don't know if you can see it, it has exactly the same representations as our little devil. We don't have the wings because we only have the front part of our little mold. So it's quite likely that he had some wings. But the, the, the grotesque figurine, the, the, the nose, the, the horns, the, the, <clears throat> the, the feet that, that are not human, the hands are like its claws, and the feet end up like goat's feet. Uh, so it has this idea of a uh, European imaginary of what is the devil. So since we don't have a lot of Portuguese images, we have to go to Europe. And in Europe, this the representation is quite uh, recurrent in, uh, <clears throat> In depictions. So uh, just to give you a few ideas of the 14, 15, 12th century, I'm not going to go, uh, although this continues until the 19th century. Uh, today the representations of the devil are a little bit different, but okay. Uh, but it continues until the 19th century. So to give you an idea of the devil is always someone that <laughs> tries to miss, take ladies uh, into uh, into their bed, misceives them. Uh, he always tells them good tales, how beautiful they are. And he, he, I actually don't know how they fall for it, but okay, <laughs> but they usually do. And he, he, he's always seen as someone that actually wants to take uh, and probably produce an heir, an antichrist, but that does, is not well written in the document. So it said by them, some, some of them said, he wanted to take me to bed so I can make a child. But no one, uh, none, none of them conceives. Although in Portugal, the devil conceiving someone is quite frequent in our popular imagination. A bridge somewhere in the world is always has a devil, and someone that a lady that cannot conceive walks the the, the, the bridge at midnight, and she will conceive the, the, in the next year. So I don't know who was there at that time, but some, something will work out. Uh, so we will continue. And the devil is always supervising over lovers, of course. <laughs> when, when we have sexual intercourse, with not only the purpose of, uh, of reproduction, but when we enjoy pleasure in it, the devil is always there. What happens is, and I can continue with this, it always appears with phallic uh, representations and, and everything. What the documents tell us is, um, Sometimes this, so the, the problem is, we know that the documents tell us that these images existed. We know that people use them and we know that people, especially women, had relations, imaginary or not, with the devil. Uh, but my question is, what were those figurines used for? Because that was the, the main question. And we go for documents again. And sometimes ladies go to clever ladies or witches, what you call it. They are known as ladies that know things in the documents. Uh, and they give him the metal fig figurines. And metal figurines are usually put under a husband's pillow for him to look at her and not looking at other women. They are used as well as if you have a lady that you don't like to, you put the, those, you, you find a way of putting that little satchel, little figurine. Uh, down, uh, down the bed is always the best place. You sleep there and you have a devil there. And it's always the best place to create the, the evil inside. The evil. So I will just give you some some of the images I've been up to. So they are fantastic. They're interesting. Uh, so the the, the <clears throat> until the 17th century. So so it's interesting to see that most of the religions are female the devil and not male the devil. So it's it's interesting to see that the, that sexual relation is always that sexual tension is always related to each other. Uh, of course, we we had also to go into the Muslim um, devils, and although they are contrarily to what happens in the Christian world, where the devil can actually have something to say and change the course of events. In the in the Muslim world, there are devils, but they cannot change anything. So God has a final word there. Except, But in the Christian world, well, they kind of share responsibility of what happens instead of everything being in the hands of God. So across Europe, we have a lot of phallic representations, a lot of devil, uh, demon representations that can actually, although what I've noticed is not always the devil is, or, or this sexual representation of evil is used to do wrong. Sometimes it's used to do right. And in Massimaritim in Italy, we have the penis art, uh, art the penis art, uh, art tree. And the penis tree is ladies are gathering pieces of, down here. And, the, 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 and they sometimes related to the fertility rituals. So can this little devil be also used, those little devils, the little cast uh, lead figurines, can they also be used as uh, things to promote fertility instead, uh, instead of doing wrong? Or can they be used on anything? And someone will just cast them and sell them to someone. 
all of course we have to believe that this casting itself would have some rituals and everything and probably words and some smells and and herbs and whatever uh but could they be sold as what do you need do you need some do you need a child here you have do you need someone to get hurt here you have so you can probably use this for many many uses and not just simply to do anything so in conclusion uh this little devil reflects popular superstition that was trying to be controlled by the authorities okay they could not do it but okay it seems to be a sign of collective idolatry if uh, in some things i'm not a fan of dualisms but documents and objects seem to divide the world in dual vision between good and evil so probably i don't want to get stuck to those dualism but i probably need to discuss them here and evil is represented by a hideous being with the look of an animal and a clearly sexual thank you so much <laughs>